This is Kelly Hill, technology reporter with RCR Wireless News. I'm here today with Steve Krupper of Parallel Wireless. And uh, we are at IWC 2016, and you guys have uh, basically a FirstNet eNode B right behind us. Indeed, yes. And we've taken the eNode B and we've made it what we call band 14 in a box. So you can get a complete system to take away. So supposing Cal Fire was having an incident that was far from backhaul. Mm -hmm. Taking the band 14 in the box includes the EPC, it includes our headnet gateway, it includes, very important, the eNode B that you see behind us. Mm -hmm. And equally important, to make it useful to them, you know, to ride on a transport layer, mutual links, uh, media sharing, and also interop tool comes with it. Okay. And we've also bundled the Sonom phones in. Now, all this is important because, and I'll go through them one by one. First, to have an operation that can stand untethered, can stand without backhaul, mm -hmm. is important because once the incident starts, you don't have backhaul set up. You don't have satellite set up for a while. So what are you going to do in the first hour or two hours before you have some connectivity back to the outside world? Then you need it all to be freestanding. And so having the EPC with the band 14 in the box means it can operate in the desert, it can operate in the middle of the woods. Now, MutualLink has provided the applications that do two important things. One, obviously, is the LTE media sharing. Okay. So you can do video, you can do voice and data over the Sonom phones. But equally important, they will connect to the existing LMR systems. Inevitably, a fire truck is going to roll up its LMR that's never heard of FirstNet, that's never heard of LTE, and you're going to have another, let's say, a police vehicle that does have LTE. And so MutualLink will bridge those two. Now you guys had a setup, uh, a live setup uh, uh, at the Super Bowl. So tell yes. us a little bit about what capabilities you guys For enabled sure. in that instance. Well, you're familiar with the five BTOPs, the five early builder programs. Yes. We have started calling ourselves the sixth BTOP. <laughs> Obviously not federally funded because we've at this point we've done 12 different Band 14 deployments. So 12 FirstNet compatible deployments around the country. Most everybody knows about what we did at the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. 20 days before the Super Bowl we were invited to set up took us 20 minutes to train the FBI Wi-Fi technicians and to have them set it up. So we did the Super Bowl. Uh, we also did the Winter Institute, something mm -hmm. that Texas A&M set up. Okay. We covered the FirstNet board meeting in Houston because yes. Harris County, very sophisticated operation, sort of the leading BTOP in some ways, uh, they didn't have coverage within the Hyatt Hotel. Mm -hmm. And they said, can we provide coverage? Give us a couple days, Band 14 coverage in the hotel. JFX, okay. Winter Institute, Band 14, uh, let's see, Super Bowl, um, so we've been doing a lot of these different deployments. And the reason is that uh, LTE in a carrier world is very different, we're finding, than a public safety world. There are a lot of issues that one doesn't even think about. The easiest one is that FirstNet can't afford to build out a national network that's fixed in the same way as ATT or Verizon. Okay. If FirstNet had $70 billion, great, they could build out 40,000 towers, not going to happen. Not for 6.5. Right. So it's got to be some hybrid, and there are two dimensions of the hybrid. One is, obviously, it's going to use carrier services backup for roaming. Okay. But also, the hybrid is going to have fixed and deployables. Yes. And so behind you, we have a unit, a deployable unit, that we expect to go in every police car, every fire truck, so that each one will create a Band 14 bubble. And also, if there's Band 14 nearby, It'll amplify it, to use a layperson's terms, or if there is no band 14, it'll pick up carrier services and then create a band 14 bubble. Okay. So that hybrid has two dimensions. One has a mix of carrier services and band 14, and the other one has a mix of fixed band 14 and deployable. Okay. okay. Um, so Steve here at IWCE, what are you seeing that's intriguing or interesting? Ah, okay. I'd say the most important thing that I've learned was, as I said, LTE deployments for carriers are well honed. We don't need to learn anything more about how to build LTE networks for carriers. However, when I was just listening to the presentation by five of the early builders, mm -hmm. they talked about their key learning conditions. Yes. None of those key learning conditions are things that carriers worry about. Carriers don't worry about group communications. Carriers don't worry about deployables. Mm -hmm. Carriers don't worry about multi-core. So when you put all those things together, you realize, okay, FirstNet is a legitimate different, it's a legitimate different architecture, and the current vendors that are serving carriers are not so well suited to serve FirstNet in their needs. Okay. Great. Well, thanks so much for your time and perspective. Thank you. Appreciate it.